a bit of a trigger warning, I would say. Some of this footage is a bit disturbing. Um, but this is some footage that was circulating online um, outside of an art gallery in San Francisco. This man, who's been identified as Collier Gwynn, works in a nearby office space. It's his art gallery. It's his art gallery. Yeah, this, okay. this is, yeah. Yeah. I thought that he, it was confirmed that this is his art gallery, but it's it's outside this restaurant called Barbaros yeah. that he's not affiliated okay, with. Gotcha. It's near his art gallery. I see. And he came out and... Well, I mean, this is, talk about a memorable piece of uh, exhibit here. He's the, owner of the, probably, he is the owner of the Foster Gwynn Art Gallery in San Francisco. Yeah. Okay, so it's nearby. Yeah. What, uh, what, mm-hmm. uh, either way, just with that context, this is a, f- uh, a video that exemplifies a lot of what we talk about on this program about how the anti-homeless push is often a result of uh, real estate groups, people who are small business owners who want things to look uh, aesthetically pleasing for their own financial benefit. And it's rooted in extreme self-interest and greed at the expense of humanity. And here is footage of that, just, it's just personified. That is uh, him spraying her with a hose. This is part two because he was confronted about this. Gave a quote to the San Francisco gate, um, which might be included in this, uh, but he said that he'd do it again. This is, uh, but th- th- this is someone, fo- someone followed up with him here. This monster. This is what the, 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 the jails are for this kind of person, not homeless people who don't have the ability to find a place to sleep. The, jails are for that kind of person. That's assault. Yeah. This is what, you know, this is what they want to turn everyone into. This is what they want. They want to make yep. this sort of an apolitical issue. This is just, you know, this is what all the talk about crime in the city is about. This is what all the talk about, like, the you know, uh, finding neat, used needles on the streets of Manhattan is about. Mm-hmm. is to turn everyone against this sort of nebulous, inborn, homeless threat. Because, you know, Republicans are still comfortable doing it against black people. But, you know, liberals and other sort of, I guess, less explicitly racist groups have to find a new specter to increase you know people's fear of urban centers and this it's just disgusting obviously i mean yeah this is this is the the uh ugly face behind the mask of like liberal uh concern about crime concern about crime it's rich people that live in downtown areas that they're trying to that investors um are trying to like improve so to speak and it's the guys like this like um that like when you when you see like oh it doesn't look like these crime statistics um if there's any maybe durability or if you put in the context of like long-term trends that this is something to be panicked about what is what's happening is this these these people are suffering and that's getting in the way of san francisco and urban centers being pristine playgrounds for suburbanites and bridge and tunnelers to come in and go to my art gallery and go to my restaurant and give me money and give me money that's what that is so i want that guy and i want him arrested tomorrow i I want him in jail i want to say uh peter calloway who's a public defender in uh, san francisco tweeted out absolutely disgusting and a metaphor for the city's response to homelessness more on that the third below and to be clear this is a crime i've clients who have spent weeks months in a cage for less uh, i doubt this will investigate it. it's not the right kind of victim okay so. let's uh, let's hear what he has to say this monster i've been here for 40 years we've had tons of homeless but they haven't been in a situation where they get that violent with 10 days of the neighborhood trying to do something wait so I, who's violent who's violent right who's violent right. I, I just I'm have sorry. a hard time. I just, I like, I, th- these, these people are. This is lies. This is the way that they lie. Well, it's I also, it also makes. How do you live with yourself? You pretend they're the violent ones when you're just, but, when they're just sitting there. Uh, but that's, that's, that's a way of almost transferring justification to your actions where you're, this man is not seeing him literally hosing a person down who has no, who has no resources, no money, no place to say is sitting on the street and saying, 
I'm doing this in response to in my in response to whatever so-called nebulous violence he's referring to, and therefore it absolves me mm. of any sort of claim that what I did was violent. Something the, the that people literally employed in this in riots in the '60s, he was doing on the street in San Francisco, a so-called liberal hippie San Francisco. This is what San Francisco is. Yeah. This is what San Francisco is. Don't let anybody fool you about what the caricature of San Francisco is. Brooke Jenkins, the new San Francisco DA, that's San Francisco. Francisco. This is San Francisco. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the violence against his property value because I just have a hard time mm-hmm. believing yeah. a story because if she, let's be honest, this is the United States of America. If there was a violent homeless person outside your building, regardless of it's San yes. Francisco or North Dakota mm-hmm. or Alabama, the police would come and take care of it and it would be violent, more violent than this. And exactly. so like, I just, I just don't, I, I don't know like how that, how we're supposed to believe it could be an actual, even, you know, specter of violence other than just like the presence was something that we know people in san francisco find to be especially you know jarring you know what i do with violent people is i spray them with water Mm -hmm. like that's that's the that's the violent um uh individual playbook is you want to just hose them down but but that's the entitlement of that kind of person with that class with with that you know the the small business owner who deserves profits and an empowered victim discourse it's a violence against me for your your existence is violence against me yeah we have been able in the past to get them taken to a shelter, which they leave immediately. Oh, you're... But they've also had a Two situation cages in there? where... I, I don't know. I've, I've listened to her. I've listened to her talk to the people and say, "No, this this is the way I want to live." Yes. My idea of cleanliness is not your idea of cleanliness. Yes. I've listened and to her do fine. that. But it's fine if she knows what she's saying. Yeah. What? I so mean, what? Pater- so, so he's paternalistic, and he's also. Uh, has zero understanding of what shelters actually are. We should put her in a loony bin is what she's he's basically well, saying. Yeah. There, if she knows what she's saying. And they by the way made that easier to do in New York City. So And I just want to say it's gonna happen across the country and that's why people like Chase Boudin are being ousted because they wanted to make it easier to institutionalize homeless people without any legal recourse or ability for them to fend for themselves. And well, also know, can we just say also sorry to interrupt you, Brandon, but just the 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 weather conditions that are occurring in California right now, um you will, you'll notice that Collier Gwynn over here is wearing a lot of layers because it's probably cold outside. Yeah. So being sprayed with a hose, probably for someone who has literally nowhere to go, no money, no resources, it's he's 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 he's, he's endangering her safety mm-hmm. by doing that. You know, I mean, I, think I, I still can't get over the fact that um, obviously this video is very shocking of him spraying her with the hose, but. I just can't get over the fact that the official response from officials in the city were, oh, there's nothing we can do. This is assault. I mean, you don't need yeah. to take your hand and punch someone in the face. Any sort of inappropriate physical uh, physicality with someone can be investigated for assault as far I'm as I understand. Do this over Wall living, like, I'm going to yeah, go start I, hosing I, down bankers. Yeah. Yeah, and have it on exactly. camera. See what happens right. to you. Right. I mean, I've I've lived in New York City my entire life, all 36 years, and I've encountered uh, people get absolutely assaulted by the cops and arrested for infractions with much less seriousness than that video of a hose. With that guy hosing that homeless woman down. Yeah. I mean, this is absurd. That is the most absurd, as shocking as that video is to me. That is the most absurd thing about this whole entire case. Like, I don't, I don't care about this guy who's clearly a piece of shit. He's got no bearing on me or anyone else besides the people involved here. But we should be very worried that the city has decided that this yep. guy did nothing wrong to this homeless person. Yeah. You know, I think it's not, you know, it's obviously not a coincidence that one of the areas in America with the house, the highest cost of housing, both rental and also real estate buying, has some of the worst attitudes towards homeless people and people who are unhoused living in their city. Because that's just the inherent contradiction of treating real estate primarily like a commodity or a speculative investment. You know, A, it creates an inherent population of people who are unable to afford housing and therefore have to be, you know, uh, on the streets but also encourages people who can afford housing to try to protect the value of that commodity by doing things like this. You know, this is this is entirely about making sure that people who come to the neighborhood don't feel like it's dangerous or poor and drive down the property value. And, you know, they're constantly trying to 
insist that we can have it both ways where it, housing can be this commodity that people invest all of their you know life savings into in order to flip it and do all of these like you know T- hgtv things without there being this inherent need to create a homeless population like if one person owns 10 houses then nine people essentially are going to have to go without and then that one person wants to shuffle those nine people out of the neighborhood so they don't like bring down the property value it's you know it's the disgusting cycle yeah and it's yeah the, the, the i can't i can't believe that there's uh not been any recourse for that kind of guy but i can't believe it i guess I, it's, we, we have as a society have decided an entire class of our most vulnerable population is is less than human it's perfect that he's an art gallery owner and this is why i have a very ambivalent attitude towards like contemporary art is because i think it, this is the class of people that it uh, serves um, complete freaks detached from actual uh, humanity. humanity. Yeah, I, like, isn't art supposed to give you some sort of like inner inner uh, insight into no. the human condition and it's, make you more empathetic? Or it's is kindergarten it really for just, rich kids. It's a way. It's a way. For, right. It's a way for you to hoard your wealth in like physical manifestations of it, and then well, you know, it's put something it on your the original room. NFTs. Yeah, oh, there we go. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Certainly, I you know I I'm, I consider myself a big artsy person, but I think that you know a lot of times. If these people aren't concerned with art as art they're concerned with art as a commodity yeah. Same yeah. Thing. Speculative, you know yeah. Yeah, like this is this is in you know maybe not even as like a speculative like flipping or like you know uh capital mm-hmm. control escape method but even just as a way to signal your wealth to other people right. you know people are like investing in art as a commodity not investing in art as like the experience you know sensory or otherwise of like what it means to create or make art and that's why you know when we fight online oh people who are like stand-up comedians should get to say whatever they want. It's just comedy. It's art. You want to start. Yeah. And the question is like, are you concerned with like people being able to tell jokes? Or are you concerned with people being able to tell jokes for money? Because that's not the same thing. And you know, I think <laughs> like, and I think that that's right. you know, would would the owner of like a shop or a person of a sh- where like it was more like actual like art creation focused be like this? Maybe in San Francisco, but certainly an art gallery owner. I think it, you said it, it just comes across as more ironic because it's like yeah, this is well in San Francisco. More, I'm sure. They're Obvious. they're scrubbing they're scrubbing yeah. graffiti off the walls right and that's oh, yeah. not art but the guy who is the small business owner uh, spraying down homeless people he's the true a uh, true auteur right well not you know the funny thing is too in the at least in the fine art world like the type of stuff shown off in this gallery the people actually making the art and displaying their talent and emotions and putting it all out there yeah they usually don't discover any sort of success until after they're dead that's usually when their art actually gains any value they live uh, not so good the majority of these type of artists until because their their art doesn't bring in the real bucks until after they're deceased yeah, so good. I mean, this guy is just like a casket uh, robber uh, who uh, has no humanity whatsoever. And, um, and and it's just interesting that his little discourse at the end and the different appeals he makes, that I've been here for 40 years so I can spray down a homeless person. Uh, um, we've been, that person was violent. And, you know, regardless of what your eyes told you about the video, that person was violent. We've been trying to do something. like that. It's just like... It's dark, the direction uh, this country is. And, it, and, and this is in the heels of, was it Walgreens, the CFO, saying, oh, yeah, we were basically lying about all that, mm-hmm. uh, the wave of uh, thefts and uh, completely overreacted to it. And that got the district attorney of that effing city, Chesa Boudin, recalled for this person. Oh, wow. For this type of guy. Yeah. They can admit it now that they got what they wanted. 